Hi folks, this is Pastor David Childers. I'm privileged to pastor Peaceway Christian Center here in Las Vegas, Nevada. My wife and I started this church, can you believe it, in 1985. <laughs> That's last century. And we have been pastoring here for over 35 years. God has called us to this ministry. Today we need your help in prayers and also in finances. You see, we are called to, to be a spiritual lighthouse to the lost of Las Vegas. And uh, we are reaching those that desperately need Jesus in one of the most difficult cities in America. So we need your financial support to help us continue. Continue producing these online sermons and continue with the many ministries of this church. If you could send us your support through Venmo, our username, username in Venmo is Peaceway Christian Center. If you'd like to send us a check, please do so by making the check out to Peaceway Christian Center and send it to 7570 Peaceway, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89147. Help us to continue to minister in the spiritually neediest city in America. Well, God bless you. We hope to hear from you soon. Now let's enjoy this week's sermon as we hear the word of the Lord. Hi there, this is Pastor David Childers coming to you from Peaceway Christian Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, this sermon is for March the 14th, 2021. It's entitled, Dogs Don't See Rainbows. May God give us eyes to see. By way of introduction, Kate and Leopold Pold is a movie that came out about 20 years ago. The plot is Leopold is a duke snatched out of 1876 to the present day uh, New York to a would-be inventor named Stuart, who is also his great-great-grandson, who finds a crack in time to travel back and forth. It's a hilarious situation. The Duke is awed by 21st century New York City with its automobiles, televisions, telephones, and elevators, which the Duke himself invents after he returns to his own time. The not-so-successful inventor, Stuart, is many people's hero because nobody understands or appreciates him. And through an accident, he winds up in the hospital and talking about uh, time travel lands him in the psych ward. The hospital psychiatrist incarcerates him as a lunatic. Remember, he's the only one that can get Leopold back to his own time. So out of frustration, Stuart, the inventor, begins talking to one of his nurses about his plight. She listens intently and is drawn into the story. With a sadness and resignation, he explains his epic tale of being misunderstood. He says, it's like being a dog that has seen a rainbow. A dog can describe to all the other dogs the beauty and splendor of this color, colorful heavenly display, but then they don't believe him. Dogs are colorblind. They can't see rainbows, so they don't believe him. And dogs aren't the only beings that are colorblind. Too many in this world today are blind to what God, God sees and does and wants to do in them. May God let us see what he wants us to do, what he, what he wants to do in us and for us and through us. And there's a story in the Bible about the king of Aram and the king of Israel and Elisha the prophet. The king of Aram thinks one of his people is, is a double agent. Every, everywhere he sends his army to attack Israel, Israel already knows about it. So he wants to know who's telling the king of Israel his secret plans. So let's pick up in the story in 2 Kings chapter 6. I uh, hope you enjoy the word of God today, verses 11 through 17. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officials and demanded of them, tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel. None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers. But Elisha the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Oh my. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. 
Report came back, he is in Dothan. So he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night, surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God got up the next and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. See, friends, the king of Assyria wanted to conquer Israel, but God wouldn't let it happen. So he kept giving prophetic insight about Assyria's plans to the prophet named Elisha. This is the same Elisha had served as a prophet apprentice under Elijah. While Elisha would warn the king of Israel about each attack, Syria's army would be routed. Uh, Elisha had become a major pain to the king of Assyria. And when the king found out his losses were Elisha's doing, he put a price on the prophet's head and laid plans to capture him. The king made only one mistake. Elisha wasn't his enemy. God was. The conflict was not going to be much of a contest. Now Dothan, where Elisha lived, is about 60 miles north of Jerusalem near Megiddo, where the final conflict on earth will take place someday, in the Valley of Armageddon. Well, Dothan was Elisha's home. As the night fell, the prophet and his servant lay down in relative, relative security, so they thought. Here's our first point. God's army is always with his people. I want to say it again. God's army is always with his people. Do you think the Lord's host or army just showed up? No, they were always with Elisha. They were, every, they were there every day and night. God's power, ministering angels and the Holy Spirit are always with us. God is fighting our battles, and they're all spiritual battles, really. And if he's not fighting it, then fighting our battles, then we're all in trouble. Well, my second point is this. May God open our eyes to see the true situation. God will put color in the victory rainbow. So in the pre-dawn hours, Elisha's servant gets up, and he begins his morning chores, and and he uh, drags himself out to the well to draw water. He's only half awake, shuffling along. But something is not quite right. The birds and other animals are not making their usual noises. So pushing the sleep from his eyes, he scans the, local, the hillside and his heart stops beating. There in the morning haze, it's the Syrian army against the silhouette of the rising sun. A whole army standing ready with spears and bows locked and loaded. As it turned out, Elisha's servant Gehazi was spiritually blind. His physical eyesight was 20-20. Well, he scrambled into the house and he woke up uh, his master, Elisha. And he says, the Syrian army is out there and they aren't happy. Well, he says, they look like, he tells Elisha, they look like they're ready for war. We're toast. Well, here's an interesting side issue that uh, the name given to the servant Gehazi means valley of vision. The man had the name, but he fell short, short of living up to his name. He was spiritually blind as much as the king of Syria. Gehazi's problem was not the reality of the coming battle, but his perception of that reality. He served a Jewish prophet of Yahweh, the God Most High. He carried the name of spiritual sight, yet he knew nothing of spiritual vision. So let's restate points one and two. Number one, God's army is always with his people. Number two, may God open our eyes to see the true situation. God will put color in the rainbow victory. Well, point number three is this. Our trust and confidence is in God's power and army. God's power outnumbers the enemy power. 
There's always somebody that declare God doesn't exist or that God will not be there for you. Why do they do that? The answer is it's because they're blind. So to illustrate this statement, uh, I'm going to give you a little story. A street preacher was speaking to a crowd about Jesus. A man interrupted and shouted that he didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in hell or judgment because he'd never seen God. Well, another man spoke up and said this, Friends, you say there's a building over there and that a bus stop here uh, stops here twice a day and that grass grows in the yard across the street. That is untrue. And you yourself don't exist either because I have never seen you. You see, I am blind. And the more I say you don't exist just proves that I'm blind. When people deny God, it makes, doesn't make the reality of God less true. It just confirms that they are blind. Let us remember that in addition to God's power, don't be afraid, the prophet, prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Wow. We are not to fear. For our fourth point, God waits for the enemy to attack before he blinds them. <laughs> God is even gracious to the enemy here. He waits for them to follow through with their evil plan before he strikes them with blindness. Let's read verse 18. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, Strike this army with blindness. And so he struck them with blindness, as Elisha had asked. <laughs> Elisha told them, this is not the road and this is not the city. Follow me and I will lead you to the man that you're looking for. And he led them to Samaria. And when they got to Samaria, instead of getting killed, they were fed and released. What a story they had to tell back in Aram. Mass blindness hit the entire army, truly a miracle. Then mass restoration of sight, truly a miracle. And then instead of being killed in the enemy city, God lets them live, they get fed, and they're released to go back to their families. Our fifth point is this. Dothan is a place in the middle of nowhere, a place that God shows up and shows off to make his greatness real. Dothan is mentioned one more time and one more place in the Bible. If you can get this right, you're an expert in Scripture. Dothan is where Joseph was thrown into the pit before his brothers sold him into slavery. Oddly enough, Dothan is a place of victory for both Joseph, Joseph and Elisha. For Elisha, we see the obvious victory, but for Joseph, what victory came from that place? Because when Joseph was thrown in the pit, it was the beginning of his great destiny in God. Trust God to turn your life into his victory and see his, and see his glorious rainbows in your life. Let's pray. Dear God, we are so blessed to know that you will show up to fight our battles for us. Give us eyes to see that you're always there with your armies and you will keep us safe and secure. And we have to go through a Joseph experience. Give us strength to believe you for the long-term outcome of a victory rainbow. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, I want you to just keep believing God no matter what comes your way. And you will see the great thing that God will do as you live for him, as you practice uh, worshiping him. He will fight your battles. Well, God bless you and have a great week in the Lord. And we will see you no next week, the Lord willing. God bless you. This is Pastor David Childers, uh, hoping to see you next week. Uh, as we come to you from Las Vegas, Nevada, Peaceway Christian Center. Have a great day. I just want to tell you about some uh, opportunities you can have with our school and our preschool. Building Blocks Preschool is an amazing preschool open to children 
ages 12 months to 12 years. Character building and biblical values are very important to our Christian curriculum. Our staff is fully trained and committed to serving our families with excellence in all areas. And we will be accepting this year stay-at-home students ages 5 through 12 this coming school year. So if your child cannot go to his regular school and you need to go to work, then you, you have an opportunity to enroll your child into our child care. COVID-19 protocols are in place to make sure that we keep our staff and children safe. Contact our director, Shirley, at 725-219-8866 or call the preschool number 702-873-7340. We enroll children receiving Urban League assistance and we are reopening Monday, June 29th, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we are looking forward to speaking to you about enrolling your child. Spring Valley Christian Academy is a fully accredited Christian school in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we are taking children uh, in grades kindergarten through eighth. We teach a biblical worldview and we encourage our students to excel in every area of their lives. We provide a wholesome, loving, and safe atmosphere for our students. We strive to be the place where the truth of Scripture becomes life-defining qualities of our kids' personal character. Our projected start date for the school year is August the 10th, 2020. We have COVID-19 protocols in place and scholarship, scholarships are accepted through AAA and Dinosaur and Roses. If you're interested, please call the school 702-873-3216 or Pastor Madeline, our principal at 702-460-3210.